So I'm going to be taking a look at uh, another Stratagemata um, game, Bloody Fields of Molvitz, 10th of April, 1741. But first I'm going to read from uh, Frederick the Great himself. Um, this is from some uh, first lessons in tactics. So no effort, so this is uh, Frederick the Great's writing himself, no efforts should be spared to rout the enemy completely, especially since a similar opportunity may not soon present itself. And by capitalizing upon this occasion, we may have a free hand during the entire campaign. Fortune intended to favor me with such an opportunity before the Battle of Mulvitz, for we approached Marshal de Nyberg's army, the troops of which were cantoned in three villages, without meeting anyone. But at this time, I had not yet learned enough to be able to take advantage of the situation. I should have surrounded the village of Mulvitz with two columns and attacked it, at the same time detaching dragoons to the other two villages where the Austrian cavalry was stationed to throw these troops into confusion. The infantry following the dragoons would have prevented the Austrian cavalry from mounting. I am persuaded that their army would have been totally defeated. For my own part, I shall never attack at night because the darkness causes so much disorder and most soldiers do their duty only when under the scrutiny of their officers and when they have punishment to fear. Okay, Bloody Fields of Mol Molvitz, 10th of April, 1741. So this allows us to recreate the first battle of the King of Prussia, Frederick the Great. This is the first battle where the feature of Frederick the Great commanded. Um, the game actually has a literature section. So let's see who's... Um, um, four sources uh, listed Der Erste Schlesische uh, Krieg, the first uh, Silesian War, 1740 1742. Um, Herausgeben vom Großen Generalstabe Abteilung für Kriegsgeschichte, Erste Band, um, from 1890. And then that's the first one. Second one, Obscure Battles, Mulvitz, 1741, website, obscurebattles.blogspot.com. Then we have, no, mm, is it Nosworthy? I think it's Nosworthy. The Anatomy of Victory, Battle Tactics, 1689, 1763, Hippocrene, 1992, and finally, uh, Christopher Duffy, uh, The Military Experience in the Age of Reason, 1998. Okay, uh, maneuvers, general rule. The game is played in turns. The actual turn is marked by the turn marker. Yeah, so it, it is um, it is 1.30 in the afternoon on the 10th of April. Um, after, uh, okay, players perform actions in the following order. Activations. The turn is divided into both players' activations. After the first player's activation and the next active. Activation is performed by the second player, and further alternately until all listed commands are activated. Uh, all right. Who is subject to activation? Infantry lines, cavalry wings, hussars, artillery. Activation of cavalry wings, infantry lines, hussars, artillery, each player. Ah, so we do have activation markers. So each player has a set of activation markers, AMs, one for each cavalry wing, infantry line, Hussar is an artillery unit with corresponding initiative modifiers. I do need those. Okay, so I'm just trying to work through this stuff quickly, and I I may not get things right uh, exactly right this first uh, game. I'm kind of going with what kind of looks logical. So I'll talk about the, 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 the Prussian side here. The Austrian side is similar. Um, so I grabbed... Um, these. I mean, it has a, or I guess activation marker on one side. On the back it has the L um, in red in the top right, which I assume is left, and then has a plus one for a modifier. Well, that corresponds to, for example, this leader has the red L um, as well. Um, and all of his units here 
have the same red L. So I'm just assuming that that's the activation marker for left. Here is one. Again, it's a red one. They all they all have a red one. Huh. I should say most of them have a red one. And over here there's a blue R. So similar on the other side, there's a there's a R, a one, and a left. Uh, right. Okay. Alright, so uh, activation occurs in pairs. This is kind of interesting. I mean, it's not it's not that unusual, but I, I I've thought about this mechanic before. Now I'm going to see it in action. I've thought about it just in general. I thought it would make a good uh, mechanic, so now I'm going to see it in action. Each player chooses one activation marker. So the ah, I'm actually because I thought about this before about like general battle plans. I'm going to have the Prussians choose their right. And I'm actually going to have the um, Austrians choose their left, so this will be interesting. But that, but that was, that was from earlier thinking. I, 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 earlier I looked at each side and, and how I would actually do it. So actually, well, to go over real quickly, I'm on the Austrian side. I'm assaulting on the left. I'm marching in the center and marching on the right. On the so it's basically a heavy, a heavy left attack on the Prussian side. I'm actually I'm advancing, marching in the center, and assaulting on each flank. So the Prussians are going to try a try a double envelopment, and the Austrians are doing a heavy left. And basically, the the Prussians are trying to destroy. I think it's something like two infantry units on the other side to win. So okay, but. So even though that makes it sound like it's a Prussian attack, it is a Prussian attack, but but again, I on my own decided when I was looking at everything that the Austrians would would try to use what looks like a numerical, a slight numerical advantage. I, w I was thinking that they would use that to at least attack on one flank. Okay. Um, so uh, each player is going to roll a die. So we've got the uh, ooh, nine for the Austrians and four for the Prussians. So each player makes a one die roll as the chosen commander initiative modifiers. So that must be this one. That's zero, so that's four. And on the Austrian left, they have t plus two over there. So nine plus two is 11. Big difference. Let's see what, it, how, what the difference is. Uh, announce their modified initiative check results. So four to 11. The player with the lowest score reveals the chosen commander. So the um, the Prussians would. Hmm. I don't know what you do with these markers yet. I don't know what you do with the markers yet. But okay, so the Prussians reveal that it's the uh, Prussian right. Um. Yeah, the player with the highest score decides who activates his commander first, he or the opponent. So. I'm actually going to have the Austrians, even though, even though the Austrians are on the other side of the board, I'm going to have the, the Austrians are going to actually choose to go first. Um, okay. So it determines who goes first. If he allows the opponent, he's not allowing the Prussians to go first. Um, but, okay, if he allows the opponent to go first, he does not have to, but he may reveal his chosen commander. Um, well, he's going first, so I guess he would go ahead and, and reveal that it's his left. Oh, I see. You must be, you must be choosing these secretly. Okay. Oh. Huh. Okay. After both uh, commands have been activated, the whole procedure is repeated to all commands. Okay. All right. So, so I think it's going to be the Prussian left, and then the, the the Austrian left, and the Prussian right, and then we'll do another pair. Um. All right. So. Okay, so for every activation, we're going to go through these steps. You might as well call it a formation activation, but during the activation, following actions may be formed in the following order. First, we're going to, um, I'll get to it later, but you're basically going to deal with uh, reorganization of routed units. Uh, then, then you have the opportunity to move your commander-in-chief. So here's um, Nightberg. There's Nightberg right here, the uh, Austrian sink and then uh, here's Frederick right here 
Um, yeah, so the commander in chief or sync can move and uh, also issue orders to support and wing commanders using a dispatch rider. Um, I might as well show this. So, Nightbird Frederick also has a dispatch rider, but just to show what I'm talking about here, this is Nightbird, the army commander. He has four stars, and this is his dispatch rider with him. Okay, so then, then the wing commander may try to change the order. The wing commander is this guy right here. I guess I'll show him too, 1724. Um, here's the wing commander for the left. So he's got the L there, top right for Austrian left, von Berlich. Um, I forget his whole name. But here's the wing commander. So the wing commander may try to change the order. 1724. His order is right here. Assault. Hmm. Wonder if that was actually the right order to give them. Eh, we'll see. I just put his order behind him like that. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that yet. But uh, he's not going to try to change his order. He's He wants to start the attack here. Units and brigade commanders that are out of command. See, I don't think anybody's going to be out of command here. But, uh, but anyways, here we have... Um, you're marking out of command um, those units. Then five, the player activates activates out of command units and out of command brigade commanders. Moves them, recovers their morale, reorganize units if, if eligible. Six, the player activates in command units, moves them. So that will be these guys here. It's, it's this stack here. So it's those four stacks there. Um, uh, moves them, recovers their morale, reorganizes them if, if uh, eligible. Seven, after all units from the Chosen Wing have moved. So so you're moving them out of command before in command. And then you fight using fire and or fire or melee. And then eight, at the end of the activation, you're going to deal with uh, recovery again. Okay, so I assume everybody's in command. I'll double check that, but then we'll just get to movement. Oh, man. All right, so I actually should talk about the assault order at this point. So, again, here's the left. And uh, that's the... Well, anyways, there's the assault order. Let's talk about the assault order. The wing commander may only move towards an enemy unit. That's what I want to do. At least one hex. Unless he begins his activation. That's funny. That probably should be must, not may. Remember, this is a Polish war game. The original rules in Polish, so I got to be careful of translation. Although translation is really not that bad um, so far, but it sounds like Wing Commander may only move towards an enemy, enemy unit at least one hex, unless he begins his activation on a hex adjacent to the enemy. Units may move freely and can enter hexes adjacent to the enemy. After spending their movement points, units must move one. Well, that's interesting. After spending their movement points, units must... I've never seen this before. Units must move one more hex towards their front unless they finish their move on a hex adjacent to the enemy. That is interesting. Uh, okay, and then infantry units must, must perform fire combat or initiate melee combat. Cavalry units must initiate melee. Units may recover a maximum of two morale points. Uh, okay, here it is. The march or, or attack assault. I, I see. I already see the rules are using attack and assault inter interchangeably. Um, must be marked by an appropriate auxiliary counter placed near the wing commander. Okay, that's what I did. Here's the wing commander. I put his order behind him. Okay, so for the basics of movement here, I'll use this as an example here. This unit here. So we've got a... Uh, what's important here is obviously it's cavalry. Morale is seven, and it's in line formation there. Um, so cavalry in line here, Austrian cavalry in line here has a movement allowance of eight. Um, each field hex in for cavalry in line costs um, one and a half. So basically, it's um, one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half. And then, uh, and then we said with the assault order back there, it takes one more hex move to its front. So 
So I do think, I think that's how that's done. I'll move everybody else up. Um, what else is relevant? Um, actually, I think that's all that's relevant. So I moved up uh, the uh, Austrians there. And now it's the French, um, uh, Prussian um, activation. So no matter what, they would have to move I'm not sure the leader has to move, but but they would have to move um, one hex to their front anyways, no matter what. Now right here, we do have mainly cavalry against cavalry, so I'm not sure I might be missing something there. Maybe there was a counter charge opportunity, but I just wanted to get into basic uh, combat, so... They move adjacent, they have to move adjacent, as far as I can see, and they have an attack order anyways, here. And so, um, they have to attack anyways. Um, yeah. 